there and welcome to my channel. My name is Crafty Kathy. I'm the owner and creator of Kent's Vintage Farmhouse in beautiful Chattanooga, Tennessee. And I'm so happy and thankful that you stopped in to craft and to spend a little time with me today. This morning I went to the mailbox and I am tickled pink because I got my 2024 IOD Spring Collection. I didn't get everything in the collection. Miss Lori was already running low on the inlays, so I didn't get my inlays yet, but they're coming, and there is um, one mold, I believe, that I'm missing. But enough of my blabbing. Let's get to crafting. We are going to make some beautiful indoor or outdoor planters with this collection. We're going to start off with this box that I got at the thrift store. It was $1.99, and it's definitely homemade. As you can see, it already has a little hanger on the back, so I think somebody else was using it maybe as a planter or something that you could either hang on the wall or you can hang it outside, which is what I'm going to do. Now, the first thing that I did was grabbed my new mold, and it's called Conservatory Labels. This is my favorite mold, probably my favorite mold that they've ever came out with, and I have all their molds, guys. I, I love the labels, though. You guys that watch my channel know that I'm obsessed with labels. The only one that I'm going to be using is the one on the top. So I took my cornstarch and I placed a little bit on the top. The reason why you do that is because it makes the clay even easier to come out. It's just a good practice to get into. And I'm just taking my clay and then I'm going to use that little rim that's at the top, the little lip that's at the top of all of the IOD molds and it just helps you to get a perfect mold every time. It's very easy. After you've got your clay in there, you just flip it over and let gravity do its thing. You're going to bend the mold itself, and that way the clay is going to be very easy to come out. I'm gonna put my clay back up for now, and I always stick a wet baby wipe down in there with it because it keeps it nice and fresh and then I get all the air out of my baggie. Now I'm gonna use the Tight Bond Quick and Thick, and I'm gonna place this on the back of my mold, and once I get it on the back of the mold, I'm going to place it right in the center portion of my box. Once I get it placed down, I just go around the edges and make sure that I have a good connection. I don't push hard. I am very careful when doing this because remember, we'll de we're dealing with wet clay here. I usually leave it alone overnight and let it dry, but if you don't have it overnight, just let it dry for a few hours. We're going to use this beautiful green color by DIY Paint. It's my favorite of all their greens. It's Gypsy Green. And while I'm painting this piece, I wanted to let you know that if you would like to purchase any of these new ILD products or some of the DIY paint, any of the products that you see me use in this video, I got them from Miss Lori over at Milton's Daughter. Her website is www.miltonsdaughter.com. And of course, I leave it in the comments below and I also leave it in the description box so she's easy to find and let her know that Crafty Kathy sent you. She is super helpful with any questions that you may have. Now, I decided to put some little feet on this. The only feet that I could find were these four little, like, birch logs that I got from Dollar Tree about a year ago, if you guys remember when those came out. I put the little feet on with the tight bond quick and thick, and by the time that this video came out, I didn't like the feet. And so I ended up taking them off. I want to take just a minute to welcome everybody to my channel. I am so glad that you're here with me today. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, please hit that little red subscribe button because we would love to have you as part of our family. Now here, you're going to see me take a little drawer pull that I got from Hobby Lobby on clearance. And my clay is still wet. So I just made like a little divot with it so I would know where to go with my drill bit. And I very, very slowly made a hole 
in my little box and then I pulled my drill out and then I'm just going to clean up all the little wood shavings and bits that I have there. Now it's very important to do this while this mold is still wet, while the clay is still wet. If you wait until it's dry, there's a possibility that you might crack it and you definitely don't want to do that. So if you want to recreate this piece, just make sure you do it when your clay is still wet. And you'll notice after I cleaned it up, it did open that clay up just a little bit. I'm just really carefully going to use my fingers and kind of push it back together. It's not going to harm it whatsoever. Now here I'm just going through the couple of little um, drawer pulls that I got from Hobby Lobby. And I find these things on clearance all the time. And I'm just trying to figure out which one I want. And I settled in on this smaller one because I definitely didn't want to cover up that mold in any way. I want it to be the main focal point in this beautiful planner. I know it's hard to see that sticker, but it was only 99 cents. So now it's time to have some fun and jazz it up. I'm going to use the mercantile stamp, which is perfect in every way. It's got a cow, a chicken, grain sack stripes, and I'm just using my permanent ink. I'm going around and I'm inking up the chicken that's in this grain. Now I've got it on a thin mount, and what a thin mount is, it just helps you to keep your stamp straight. You see all those little squares on it? It helps you to keep your stamp straight, and it also helps you when you have a bigger stamp like this one, because it sticks to it. You just commit to where you're gonna place it, and you put it down. You hold it still always with one hand. You keep one hand still while you're walking your fingers around the stamp with the other hand. And I'm sorry that my phone is focusing in more on my shirt than it is on, you know, the actual stamp down here. But you can see what I'm doing, and look how perfect it comes out. Next, I took the part of the stamp that says Dry Goods Company, or Dry Goods Co., and I'm going to place that right here on the front part of my box. I placed it down toward the bottom of the thin mount because it just made it easier. And you see I hold it still with one hand while I'm walking my fingers with the other hand. I didn't get the D very good, but you see how easy it was just to lay it back down and get that D really good. Now we're going to put some grain sack stripes on here. We have all been wanting some grain sack stripes from ILD for a long time, and here they are, guys. I am just tickle pink that we've got this. I absolutely love it. So I inked it up real good, and I'm going to place it on the front parts of my box to start off with, and I just needed to put it on the bottom. I was just trying to make sure that I had it like even, that it wasn't like cockeyed or anything here. So you see I'm holding it still with one hand, and then I'm using my fingers on the other hand to walk around the stamp. And then you just gently lift it up. And right there, I missed a little bit of that bottom side, but I'm going to get that in just a minute. So what I did, because I didn't want to um, ink it back up just yet, I just flipped it around and got the other side. I'm doing the same thing, holding it still with one hand and walking it, walking my fingers around it with the other. And see here, I inked it back up real quick and just went over that one little section right there and I pressed down with my fingers and boom, we got it. Now, I don't mind at all when it's kind of faded looking. It actually looks better to me uh, when it's like that. But that whole section I just totally some way missed. So I'm just inking it back up again. And this time we're going to go across the top. Because, you know, I've got the little box on the bottom. And I want it to look like it's one grain stripe pretty much going on the top and the bottom. And I apologize in advance because I got in the way of the shot a little bit. And the camera was focusing more on my hair than it was on me 
getting the stamp there. But you can still see I hold it still with one hand and walk my fingers over it with the other hand. And I'm going to do that on both of the sides. I also wanted to say, if you are enjoying this video, please give me a big thumbs up and leave me a comment, even if it's just an emoji. All these things really help out my channel, and I greatly appreciate it. Now, not to mention, you guys know that I love to talk, so meet me in the comments, and let's have a conversation. Now, here, I'm just using my last element that I'm going to be using from the Mercantile Stamp. And, you know, I don't stamp very often, but it just takes a couple of times to where your confidence really boosts. It just takes one or two times of practicing, and then you feel so much more better about your stamping. I'm going to use DIY paint in the color called Little Black Dress to paint my doorknob or my little, what do you call that thing? A little drawer pull. <laughs> I like the little peachy pink color along with that green, but it just doesn't match everything that I have planned for this special little planter box. So I just gave it one quick little coat. Now I'm going to take my DIY dark wax. It's kind of a dark brown wax. I'm going to put it on my waxing brush that I got from Miss Lori. And then I got most of the excess off on that paper towel. And I'm just going around my whole piece in kind of a circular motion. Also, I'm going over that mold so that it will be accentuated and all the beautiful things are going to be highlighted on it. Once I apply the wax, I'm using a lint-free rag to very carefully just kind of wipe back the excess. I don't want a lot on there, but I do like my stuff to look a little grunged up. <laughs> it just kind of makes it look more vintage, and I really like that. I even used a little bit of a baby wipe because I haven't sealed this paint yet. DIY paint does have to be sealed or it can be reactivated with water. So if you use a baby wipe, you can go back and just wet distress and wipe little bits and pieces of the paint off kind of here and there just to give it more of a vintage flair. And you see, I'm just going all around the piece and I'm doing the dark wax. And then I use the baby wipe to kind of wipe off areas here and there and to wipe back that dark wax. If you ever feel like you've gotten too much dark wax on there and you don't like it, you can always go back over it with that green color and just kind of dab it on there here and there and it will even out. Or you can use some clear wax before you put down your dark wax and that's going to make it come off even easier. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is use my Rub and Buff, and this color is the Antique Gold. It's one of my favorites. I'm just going over in different spots. I'm hitting the highlights. My favorite way to apply the Rub and Buff is with my finger because it just does the job. So, why else would I, you know, why would I want to try anything else? I'm definitely going to go over the mold and look at all those beautiful details. That's why I love the IOD molds. There is no other mold like them as far as the, um, the detail and the quality. They're just gorgeous. And if you've ever used Rub and Buff, you know. I mean, if you know, you know. And Rub and Buff is an amazing product. And I just love this color. I'm just kind of going around here and there wherever I want to place it. And of course, if you don't like that dark wax, if it's too much for you, you can omit that step. You don't have to do it. It's all about how you like it because it, you're the one that's going to have to live with it. This is going to go in my own garden outside by my pool. And my very last step is going to be off camera. I'm going to seal this. And I would love to know your thoughts on this piece. I think it turned out so beautiful. Please let me know what you think. Well, I want to take a ride in the whip bearing your mind. Take me all around to the thinking places where you spend your time. 
Ain't no place I'd rather go Yeah, funny little critter and I love you so And I'm gonna take a ride and we'll bear it in your mind I come and sit down with me in a rocking chair Coffee party, nice and hot, we can sit in our underwear Tell me about the dreams you had last week Swimming all around with the fish in the sea Come sit down with me in a rocking chair The second DIY is probably my most favorite out of all these. I took two tin cans that had pumpkin inside of them for my dogs. I cut off the top and the bottom, and I'm going to show you how easy it is to squish these. You don't really even have to use a rubber mallet because they're so easy, I can push it down with my hand. Now, what I like to do is the piece that has the crease in it, is I like to make that a side. You just push down with your hand, and it's kind of hard to do it and show at the same time. And please don't look at my fingernails because I've got to go get them done tomorrow. They're terrible. But down at the very end, I just used the rubber mallet and squished it down. And see, that's going to be the back side. The front side still looks nice and pretty and pristine. And it's closed up just enough that you can put real flowers in there if you want to. We're going to use this black color again called Little Black Dress by DIY Paint. And this is just a piece that I got at the thrift store for a dollar. It looks like some old scrap wood that somebody used. So we're just going to cover it all up with one good coat. And that's all I did on this one. Now we're going to play with some molds. We're going to use the Amazing Cast and Resin. Now this stuff sets up in 10 minutes. It's in my Amazon store if you want some. And we're going to use this mold. It's called Dainty Flourishes. This one is Specimens. It's in their new spring collection. Now this one was last year's spring, and it's called Dewdrop Pond. I have little pieces of resin still left in there. But we're just going to use a couple little pieces from each of these. Now a lot of times I have my resins already made. I'll just make up some extras, and that way whenever I'm going through a project, I can grab it. And what I'm showing you here is these all have exactly how much resin you need on the side of them. It's printed on the molds. So if you need to know exactly how much resin you need, it's on each one of them. What you do is you pour equal parts of A and B, and that's what I'm doing here off camera. Once you mix your A and B together, you want to work quickly because this stuff sets up so quick. And the first one I'm pouring here is in Dainty Flourishes. I need two sets of the ones that I just did. But I went ahead and poured one set, and then I just wanted a couple of the bugs. I wasn't really sure which one I wanted. And in the Dewdrop Pond, I wanted the ladybug, but I also want that dragonfly, and I'm going to get it right here. Now, I just figured that I would make a couple of the extra bugs up there in specimens. That way, what I didn't use, I'll have it sitting and waiting for next time when I need it. Now, after you get these poured and you're totally finished with your resin there, what you're going to do is leave it alone. It only takes about 10 minutes. It usually takes less than that for me, I find. But you just leave it alone and let it set up. When it turns completely white, you're done and you're ready to take it out of the mold. Now, while those are setting up, I grabbed some of this crackle that I've had for quite a while. It's Dixie Brand Bell. Dixie Bell Brand. <laughs> and oh my goodness. Uh, okay, so what you do is you're just going to place a good layer over the top, leave it alone, and let it dry. Now, it does take a while for this brand to dry. I got some of these papers, and these are from Timu. They're just little cheap papers, and I like the typo typography on them. Good Lord, I can't talk today. And I've seen so many people use this tape trick where they'll take this tape, and they'll put it on the back of a piece of cardstock like this and pull it up, and it pulls up some of that cardstock, and it makes it thinner almost like a rice paper to where it's easier to decoupage. Well, 
I tried it and tried it, and a few little places came off, but it was not enough to make any kind of difference. So I just eventually got upset with it and moved on. So what I'm gonna do is use my DIY liquid patina, and we're gonna decoupage these pictures on the front of our tin cans. Now, I don't normally decoupage with liquid patina, to tell you the truth. If you watch my channel a lot, you know my favorite way to decoupage anything is with a glue stick. Honey, if it's that easy, why in this world would you wanna do anything that's more difficult, you know? Now, I don't like using stuff that's real goopy like Mod Podge, and the liquid patina usually doesn't take too much. And I don't know if it was because I was doing it on a tin can or if it was the paper. I really am not sure, but it didn't want to stick. So what the way that I eventually got it to stick was to put the DIY liquid patina on the paper itself and on that tin can. And it finally stuck for me, but I had to kind of hold it with my hands and like keep kind of rubbing it into those grooves, you know. But it actually looked good in the end. Now I did that to both of these. On the smaller tin can, that's the second one I did here, that's where I got smarter and I placed, well, I don't know about got smarter, but <laughs> I figured it out. I placed the liquid patina on the paper and on that tin can and it was easier to stick, I have to say. And on the bottom, I just cut the excess off with the um, scissors as much as I could. And then I used my little hand sander, those little zippy sanders, they call them, and just kind of got the excess off with that. And it came off perfectly. And then on the sides, I figured what I'd do is just put a little bit of glue, hot glue, and just kind of wrap it around that little bit that was still left and get it to stick there. I'm going to use some of these precious little stickers that I actually got from Timu, y'all. There was like 30 of these little stickers in a pack. They're little birds. And I thought, how great to have these very small birds and their little stickers that I can just place on stuff. And they actually don't look bad. I mean, I was really impressed. I mean, I know it's a sticker, and you can still see a little bit of the plastic around the bird itself, but it's really not bad. I'm definitely going to be buying some more of these. All you do is just peel the back of it off and place it wherever you want it at. Now, that first little bird, I wasn't exactly sure where I wanted him at, so I just set him off to the side, and I peeled this one off where the bird is in the nest, and I thought that would look perfect, right smack dab in the middle and kind of toward the bottom of my larger can. And I just kind of set it off to the side because I couldn't really figure out where I wanted that other bird to go. I got my other can, and I'm going to place this little bird there, and he's just kind of sitting in some flowers. He's really cute. Then after I got those two main birds on there, I still had two others I wanted to put on, but for now, I just kind of set the tin cans aside so we can work again on our crackle. It was at this point when I realized that this crackle, the reason why I hadn't used it in over a year is because it literally takes over a day to dry, or at least a day to dry. And I didn't have a day because I'm actually doing this the day of the video. <laughs> yeah, so I just grabbed a dryer and I just dried it the best that I could. So then I just had to work in, in like steps on all this stuff. So at this point, what I did was grab my little pieces from Dainty Flourishes because we're gonna place them on our tin can. And what I'm doing here is placing one on the bigger of the tin cans. I'm using the tight bond quick and thick wood glue, placing it all over, well, in most places, and then just a couple little dots of hot glue so that it will hold it right now. That tight bond quick and thick will hold it for the long term, but we wanted a little bit of that hot glue to hold it for now. I got it placed where I wanted it at and just used little clamps to hold it still so that it would hold on. 
After I had that one on the bottom, I did the exact same thing on the top. Put the quick and thick on, a couple little dots of hot glue, and I placed it exactly where I wanted it and then used those little Dollar Tree clips so that it would stick where I wanted it to. When you first make the resin, it's very pliable and you can kind of maneuver it and move it around any way you need to. Now back to the crackle. <laughs> I told y'all I was just kind of working like an assembly line and getting each little step done as quick as I could. This color is faded burlap and when you're putting on the top coat on your crackle, your last color, you're not supposed to swipe it back and forth, back and forth like you normally do. You're supposed to just kind of make one quick swiping motion, otherwise your crackle won't do right. So I wanted it to have a very rustic look, kind of like an old piece of wood anyway, and I think I achieved that. It starts crackling immediately. Now, back to the tin cans. And I'm getting the color called Gypsy Green, and I'm going to paint these little pieces that I put on the top and the bottom. I love to use these pieces like to frame stuff out from dainty flourishes. I think it's just the perfect thing to use as a framing piece. And I love the color of this Gypsy Green, the way that it pulls out that green that's in the little bird pictures. So I did the top and the bottom of this one with the gypsy green. Now my plan is to put this outside around my pool also with some nice fresh flowers in there. I'm probably gonna put some succulents in there or possibly some type of vine. So I know that that hot glue is not gonna hold it if I just glued it to that. So what I did was just took some wood screws and I placed both of those right in the center. And then I got upset because I realized I didn't even put it right in the center. It, it, I just eyeball things and it was kind of off or the top one was definitely off. So I just scooted it back over and then put that little screw right back in there and it was just easy peasy and we got her done. Now we've still got these two other birds that we've got to figure out where they're gonna go. And I just couldn't figure out where I wanted that one to go, so I wanted to see what he would look like if I just put him on the board. And the more that I sat there and looked at it, I didn't like it too much. But I did place that other little bird on that bottom um, tin can because it was a little bit bigger. And eventually what I did on that top one is just took it off and just chunked it because to me it just didn't look right anywhere on here. Now I had to create another mold so I could have those exact same two little pieces from the dainty flourishes to go on the top that I placed on the bottom. So it's time to get those on there and that can was so much smaller what I ended up doing is just taking my scissors and just cutting it. That's another thing I like about using the, you know, the molds. You can just kind of cut it off wherever you need it. And this one was definitely too long, so I cut it off and I used that same color, that gypsy green, to color the top and the bottom. Now, do y'all remember when I did the molds, I made a couple of other little things. I did the little ladybug and I had a certain look for these that I wanted that was in my mind. I didn't want them to like be very vibrant or bright or really stick out. So I used a little bit of red paint and just kind of rubbed it in with my finger on the ladybug and then that orange color called Summer Crush. And then I took a little bit of Dark and Decrepit. Now, dark and decrepit is a liquid patina that's a brown color. And I just kind of added that on each of my little bugs, my little ladybug and my two little beetles. I think those are beetles. And those, by the way, came out of the new spring release, you know, the one that's called Specimens. And then we've got this beautiful dragonfly here, and I painted his body with the dark and decrepit. Now, like I said, I didn't want these to be very crazy and vibrant because they're not the main focal point of my picture. So the next thing I did was pull back out that color called Little Black Dress, and I'm just kind of going over the body of the beetles. 
I go over the um, wings just a little bit with just different colors. I put a little bit of the gypsy green on the wings of the dragonfly. This color is called liquid sunshine it is a beautiful yellow color but i didn't want it to be too bright so i literally like put one little stripe down each wing and then rubbed it in with my fingers now this purple is french millinery because the dragonflies that i see always have a little bit of a yellowy and a purpley kind of color i don't see a whole lot of dragonflies around I see a lot of snake feeders, we call them, but not a lot of dragonflies. So I'm going to use a little bit more of the purple and just blend just kind of different colors all over his wings. Now I'm going to add each of these little critters to my planter. I'm just doing the same process as before, the tight bond quick and thick and a couple of little dots of hot glue. And I'm just sticking each one wherever I want it to go. Now to finish it off, I'm going to use my good old rub and buff. And this color that I'm using here is called Gold Leaf. It's a little bit lighter and brighter than that antique gold. And I'm going to do the same application. I'm just going to put it on my fingertips and just put it wherever I think it's going to be pretty. I really like to use it on the molds to accentuate all those beautiful details. And then I just kind of placed it here and there, wherever I thought that it would look good. I definitely placed it on all my little insects. I put it on the wings of the dragonfly. And the way that I did the bugs, especially the little beetles, since they're kind of a dark black color, I just used it on my fingertip and went down the very center part of their body and just rubbed it in so it wouldn't be so bright and vibrant. Because I wanted the main focal point of the planter to be the tin cans, of course. And then the very last step is I used the liquid patina on the front part of the tin cans so that it would give those stickers a matte look instead of that glossy sticker look. And I hope you like this one. Let me know what you think about it. All right, we're on our last DIY of the day, and this one is really short and sweet. I got this vintage colander, and I got this from a lady that used to sell, like, vintage items and stuff, and she just really wanted to get rid of it, and she sold it from her basement for, like, a buck. <laughs> so I think I got a pretty good deal on it, and I've had it for a while, just didn't know what to do with it. We're going to use this beautiful color called Skeleton Key by DIY Paint. Now, the thing about Skeleton Key is sometimes it looks like a blue tone, and sometimes it's a gray tone. It's kind of hard to uh, say if it's gray or if it's a blue. I guess it's a blue-gray. So, what I did was go around on the outside and the inside, and I just gave it one coat. I went ahead and made sure that I got the feet and every little bit of this in that beautiful color. And here's what it looks like when it's nice and dry. You let me know what color you think Skeleton Key looks like. So what we're going to do is use the Apothecary labels, the mini labels. And these are so beautiful, guys. They've got the Roman numerals in them, four different fonts of letters. And then there's also all these beautiful label stamps in there. And I was going to show you all the different spring things that I got, the spring collection. And 
I was afraid that the video was going to be way too long, so I cut all that part out because I also thought that you guys probably have already seen the spring collection because it came out last week. So here I'm just going over my stamps. I'm seasoning them with a 220 grit, and you have to do this just the first time that you use your stamps, and then you never have to do it again. Now, I have two different thin mounts. I have one big one that I use as a whole, and then I bought one that you can cut down into small little pieces because it just makes it easier. Now, I had a time getting this stamp on this curved surface. Like I said, I don't use stamps a lot, and I need more practice, and I got aggravated, but let me just show you how it came out. I was trying to figure out which one I wanted to use, and I landed on one that said Newberry on the top of it. We used to have an old store here in my town, and I still remember it from when I was a kid. It was called Newberry and Denton, and it was just like a general store, a mercantile store. And I thought, that's it. That's what I want to place on the front of it. So I just placed it where the kind of in the middle of both of the handles had to put me a baby wipe underneath it to hold it up so you guys could see what I was doing. And I did it the way that I'm supposed to. I did have to move it up to the top of my thin mount. And I think I would have done better if I wouldn't have used a thin mount at all on this stamp. I think that's kind of where I went wrong. But anywho, I put it up at the top of my thin mount flipped it around, and I did like I was supposed to. I held it still with one hand after I committed and placed it down. And then I used my other hand to walk around it like I was supposed to. And then you just pick the stamp up. But when I picked it up, I just wasn't happy with it because that little bottom part down in the middle, I didn't feel like I got it good. So, if even though the ink is permanent, if you wipe it off right away with the baby wipe, it will come off. The second time, I didn't use the thin mount, and I felt like it was even worse. I, I just wasn't happy. And time was not going to allow me to do it again, because each time that I wiped it off, I had to repaint and then dry my piece. So, here is how I solved this little problem problem that I created really for myself because I don't practice enough with my stamps. I took this piece of muslin that I had and I buy mine at Hobby Lobby and I really like working with it. It's tea stained. I just soaked it in tea one day and so what I'm going to do is just cut and then rip because I like the jagged looking edges, the rough edges. I just cut where I wanted it to be ripped at and then you just gently rip, and it just makes a perfect straight line. So here, I just inked my stamp up one last time, <laughs> and I have it on my thin mount, and I'm just going to lay down my piece of muslin. I'm going to place it right in the center, and I'm going to do exactly like I had been doing before, holding it with one hand while I walk my fingers across the stamp, and the way that I got my edges to be frayed the way that I prefer them to be is by using my little Cricut weeding tool and just kind of pulling at it until I would get the string to come off and then just start pulling strings until it was, you know, all frayed and cute and looking all vintagey. In the center of my label, I wanted to put the word vintage, so I picked out each one and I used my little thin mount because it shows me exactly where I need to place it so that it, the words will be all in line. And the way that I got my little piece of muslin to stick on the front of my colander was to just use my liquid patina, and then it just set perfectly. Since we were dealing with a type of fabric or a linen, what I did was put a really good amount on the back, and then I just placed it there on my colander, and I left it alone overnight so that it would stick. And guys, it was already tea stained, so I didn't have to make it look any more vintage. And that's all I did to this, and I think it's beautiful.
If you guys stuck with me through this whole video, I just want to thank you so much for coming and spending a little time with me today. I sure do hope that you liked all the different things that I made with the 2024 IOD Spring Collection, and there's going to be more coming. Don't forget to go to www.miltonsdaughter.com if you want to buy any of the products that you saw in this video. And guys, don't forget that my videos come out at 7.30 on Mondays and Thursdays. And I've been a little slow lately, but I'm trying to get back on track. Now, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. If you haven't subscribed already, we would love to have you. Give me a big thumbs up and please leave me a comment. All those things help out my channel tremendously. And I can't thank you enough for doing that. But I'll be seeing you back here next time at 7.30. That's our new time. It's the summer time because summer's coming up and people are going to be coming inside a little bit later. So our time is moved up to 730 Eastern Standard Time. I'll see you here next time. Lord willing and the creek don't rise. If you're on a mobile phone or an iPad, you can touch my face right here and subscribe to the channel. Isn't that cool? And if you did like this video, I have another one right here that has similar content. Just click on it and it'll take you there when this one's finished. I love you guys. God bless you and your families.